So last year, I released a short film called Glitter Girl. And it was a story about a girl who was a social media influencer, if you want to call it that, who got caught up in the whole game of social media and, you know, wanting this social validation all the time. I got a ton of messages from people asking me how I shot the short film and how I color graded it. And I had thought about doing this for a while where I would show you guys how exactly I color graded the film, but I wasn't exactly 100% happy with my color grading on the film. There are definitely a lot of scenes that I am happy with in terms of the color grading, but I feel like, you know, I had such a short and tight deadline for the short film, so I kind of, I wouldn't say rushed it, but I, I did kind of speed through a bit of my post-production process, so I pretty much decided I just wanted to get it done versus perfecting it. So I'm going to take this opportunity to recolor grade some of the scenes in this film that I wasn't exactly happy with, and while doing so, show you how you can create your own LUTs in Photoshop to use in programs like Adobe Premiere Pro. Hey guys, how's it going? Alex Perry here, and I'm a filmmaker and content creator from Toronto, Canada. Before we jump into today's video, it would be much appreciated if you would hit that subscribe button down below. I do have a lot of cool content coming your way, so it would be awesome if you would hit that subscribe button and click that little bell notification icon to get notified every single time I drop new videos. Trust me, you won't regret it. And while you're at it, you can follow me over on Instagram and Twitter at Alex S. Perry. But enough of that, let's jump right into today's video, and that is, once again, how to create your own LUTs in Photoshop so that you can apply it directly in Adobe Premiere Pro or other video editing programs. Let's get to it. Okay, so first things first, I've already dropped my video clips into my sequence and timeline here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create an adjustment layer. Then we're going to drag that in over on top of our first video clip. So this allows us to start making adjustments to this video clip without actually impacting that original video layer. So that'll help us later on down the road if we want to be able to decrease or increase the intensity of the effects that we will be applying. So as you can see, the image doesn't quite look great yet or just right. So this is straight out of the camera. It looks a little bit flat. It's a little bit desaturated. The color tends a little bit off. So we're going to go ahead and make adjustments to this to just color correct that image first. Yeah, I think that's, that's pretty good. So if we turn this on and off again, I think overall you can agree that looks like a much more neutral looking image. It looks color corrected. I think the colors look natural. I think the highlights and shadows are pretty good. Saturation looks good. So now we are ready to start the color grade process. So this is where we're going to take a screenshot or snapshot of our frame here and bring it into Photoshop. So if we click this little camera icon right here, this will allow us to take a snapshot of the frame that we have on the screen right here. So if we go ahead and name that, then I'm gonna just save that to my documents and hit okay. Okay, so then after we've saved our screenshot there, we're gonna open it up in Photoshop. Okay, so now we've got our nice screenshot here in Photoshop. So we're ready to start making our proper color grading adjustments to this image. So the things that I like to keep in mind for when I'm color grading a shot like this is the tone of the scene. So this scene was a very, uh, not sad scene, but our main character here, she's gone through a lot, she's very upset, she had been crying, her, her world has been flipped upside down, and she's at like her lowest point in this film. I want the feel and look of this scene to be a little bit more on like the cool, sad, or like, you know, melancholy type tone to this scene here. So I want to keep that in mind when I'm coloring this image here. So the first thing we're going to start off with here is a hue saturation adjustment. So if we go up to layer, new adjustment layer, and then hue saturation, hit OK. It now added this adjustment layer on top of our main layer here. So now we can start playing around with the settings over here. So by default, it's set to master. So that is what would change the colors and saturation and the lightness of the image as a whole. But that's not what we want to do we want to be able to go into the individual colors here and start adjusting that. So I'm going to start off with my reds. I think I like where the hue of the reds is, but I just want to increase the saturation ever so slightly. Just want to get a little extra punch in there. So as you can see, like in the lips there and the skin tones, it just kind of gives it a little more saturation to the red. Now, you don't want to go too far in either direction with the hues, saturation, even the lightness, especially if you're shooting in an 8-bit codec, because there's just not enough color information there for you to be able to push it too far. Your image will start getting all artifacty and pixelated, and it's just going to look really ugly. So once again, just don't go too far with that. So I think we're going to leave that at that, and we're going to go into yellows next. 
Now, I think the image is a little too yellow for my liking. So I'm gonna just bring down the yellows a little bit, maybe somewhere around there. But remember, we still do wanna get this down to a more blue type look. So we're gonna just go ahead and we're gonna skip our green. We're gonna skip our cyan. I don't think we really need to touch much in there. We're gonna go straight to our blues. So we're going to go right about there. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. And then we're gonna just go ahead and suck some of the magenta out of this image. I think it's a little bit too much. If you go too far, you can kind of see where those colors are. So I'm just gonna start pulling it out of this image quite a bit. Okay, so now if you toggle this on and off, you can see how you've affected this image. So that's the first step, but now the second one is to add another adjustment layer. So we're gonna go back up to layer, new adjustment layer, color balance. Hit okay, and then we've got this new layer added on top of our hue saturation and on top of our main image layer. So this is where you can really start shifting the colors in the shadows, the midtones, the highlights. So we're actually gonna start off with the shadows. So I like to do the darker parts of the image first. So this is where we're gonna really start pushing the color down into the cooler side. So we're gonna go ahead and start pushing the first slider down into the cyan. Don't wanna go too far. Like see if you notice that, that's going, over. I think a little, a little bit far. It's a little too much. It's even looking kind of green. I know we can adjust for that still, but that's, that's way too far. So I'm gonna say maybe around minus 20 or so. That's looking pretty good. Then it's still, I think it's looking a little too green. So we're gonna just get a little more magenta in there. Notice how the skin tone starts changing a bit. So when it's too green, that looks a little sickly. It looks almost like a, it could be like an action movie or something. That's not what I'm going for here. So we're gonna push the green out into the magenta a little bit. Yeah, I think that's about good. Once again, you can really start unchecking these and checking them back on to see the effects it's having on your image. So now the shadows look a lot cooler, got some more magenta and a bit more naturalness to the skin tones back. And finally, we're gonna play with the yellow. I think we're gonna just push that once again a little bit more towards the yellow because overall it's looking too blue. I don't want like all that blue in the skin tone necessarily. So we, we wanna introduce a little bit of the yellow back in there just to make sure it's not being impacted too much. So. Overall, now this has a bit of a cooler look to the whole thing. Then we're gonna go ahead and play around with our midtones. Once again, I still want the skin tones to look pretty good and natural. I don't want this to be overly stylized. So we're gonna just introduce a little bit more red back in there. So we don't wanna add too much, just a little bit. I'd say maybe, yeah, around plus four, plus five. That looks good for, for me. Magenta, we can play around with ever so slightly if we want to, but I think it's looking quite good actually. Yeah, we're not gonna really touch that too much. And finally, we're gonna just go a little bit down on the yellow there. Yeah, something like that. Okay, on and off. So now we've adjusted the midtones and the shadows, so we finally want to play around with the highlights. So, once again, I think in the highlights is where we do want to introduce a little bit more of that blue tint. So we're gonna just go ahead and drag that down a bit. Okay, then magenta. I think it's looking a little too purpley. Yeah, we'll add a little bit of green back in there. Okay, and finally, we're just gonna play around with the blue yellow slider here. Once again, I want this to be, I want this to have a certain look to it, so I'm pretty happy with that. I just brought a little bit of yellow back into the highlights there. So now if we turn this on and off, you can really see, once again, I didn't go for a crazy look here. I wasn't trying to make this overly stylized blue looking or anything like that. I just wanted it to have a little more of a colder type feel to it. And I think we've got that. I think we got a little more of the cyan blue tealy color in there in the highlights and in the shadows here a bit. Skin tones are still looking quite natural. So I think overall, this is uh, quite a bit of an improvement. And I think it sets the tone for the scene we've got here. Okay, so then finally, we're gonna add one more adjustment layer here. So we'll go back up to layer, new adjustment layer, and then we're gonna go to curves. So I'm just gonna make an ever so slight adjustment here. So I'm gonna just bring down my highlights a little bit once again in here. So I still think the highlights are a little too bright. So I'm gonna bring that down, but I do wanna maintain some of the midtones a little bit. So we're gonna just make sure we pop that up a bit. But I also want to flatten the shadows a little bit. I do like going for this somewhat flat, low contrasty look to my films like this. So not crazy, like we don't wanna go up here like this. I'm gonna just bring it up ever so slightly and even just drop down those blacks just a tad again so that the whole image doesn't get brighter. So as you can see in here, if we turn this on and off, it's just kind of dimmed down the image a little bit. The shadows are a little bit more flat. 
highlights a little more flat, but it still has enough detail and definition in the overall look. So I think we're pretty good there. So if we turn this all off, that's our original color corrected photo or image. Then we changed the hue and saturation a bit, played around with the color balance, and then finally adjusted the curves a bit to have our overall slightly more moody look to this image. So I think I'm ready to export this now as a LUT. So if we go up to File, Export, and then see Color Lookup Tables over here, we're gonna click on that, we're gonna give this a name, then we're gonna go ahead and make sure 3DL, CSP, and ICC Profile are unchecked. We only want Cube to be checked off over here. We're gonna leave this at 32 grid points and medium, and we're gonna hit OK. So now we're gonna actually save this file here again, so we're gonna call it Glitter Girl Hallway Color Grade. I'm gonna save that to my documents, hit save, and now we're good to go. So now we're gonna hop back into Premiere Pro and apply our LUT. Now that we've got this going here, this is ready to go. We have our first adjustment layer on there for the color correction. Now we're gonna drag on top a new adjustment layer, drag it out to the length of our clip. So now we've got another adjustment layer ready to apply the LUT to it. So under the Lumetri color panel, we're gonna Minimize basic correction and click on creative. Now over here is where you can start applying some LUTs. So I'm gonna click on browse. Then we're gonna to go to documents and we're gonna choose the LUT that we just created. So I believe I called that glitter girl hallway color grade. So we're gonna hit open and it's applied the LUT. So if you go back on over to Photoshop, you'll notice that the image looks pretty much identical. If you go back and forth, see? So now it has that exact look. All right, guys, well, you have it. That is how you color grade a scene in a program like Adobe Premiere Pro using a LUT you've created yourself in Adobe Photoshop. This is something that's super easy to do. It really isn't that hard once you start playing around with all the color balance and photo editing in Photoshop. I think it's much easier if you're starting out with color grading and LUTs. So it's just like, you know, don't necessarily download a bunch you find off the internet. It is great if you do that, and there's lots of good LUTs out there. But when you're first starting out, I think it's better to have an understanding of how to adjust things yourself and create your own LUTs. You can create a lot of fun, cool, interesting LUTs yourself, and you're pretty much doing it for your specific footage. If you just download a LUT, you're gonna be going back and forth, trying out so many different ones on your footage to see if it looks good. So in this situation, we were able to just like take a screenshot of our own footage, bring it into Photoshop, and really start dialing out these colors and just thinking about how you want your image to look and making those adjustments. So I think this is a great and fantastic way to do it. And look, it's you've created your own LUT. If you follow this tutorial, you were able to create your own LUT now very easily. So hopefully you found this useful, and I really hope you start having fun with color grading. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button down below and drop me a comment letting me know what you thought of this video. Do you want to see more content like this? Are you interested in color grading and other video editing techniques? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, while you're at it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that little bell notification icon to get notified every single time I drop new videos like this one. There's lots more cool stuff coming your way, so make sure you stay tuned. As always, I'm Alex Perry, and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.